The Chinese and Aztec New Year Counts Now finally, we have arrived to the point of this essay where we are to account for the similarities that exist between the two cycles of the Chinese year count and the Aztec year count. As was earlier touched upon, both of these year counts initiate the first day of their years in our month of February. Although, in fact, it is because the Chinese year cycle is based on a lunar count, which designates that new year as happening with the second occurrence of the new moon after the winter solstice, that the Chinese new year tends to undulate between the months of January and February. But for the most part, the Chinese new year will usually be seen as to be arriving in February, where the Aztec new year always has its initiation. As personal study has recently revealed, the Aztec calendar, which begins its new year in February, is based on an assessment of the passage of 54 days having passed after the advent of the winter solstice. This, of course, only takes place during those brief time periods within the years of two read, which close the 52-year cycle, and at which time the Aztec year cycle has taken its full course and has returned westward to its lowest common denominator of activation. This is to say that finally, after 52 years had passed since the correctional set of days were then added, that it was to slip back once again around to the time of February 12th in the year of 2 Reed, which is exactly 54 days after the winter solstice of December 21st. It should also be noted that the ceremonial correction which had taken place in the year of 2 Reed with the Aztecs had been initially a tradition that was executed one year earlier within the time of one rabbit. This fact is well known, but what is not so obvious is the fact that this was originally a ceremony that was extracted from out of the ancient Mayan traditions of calendar corrections, which happened in their year of 2 Manic. But since the time of the Aztecs, the ceremony was pushed forward by one year, so that the backwards drift would then occur consistently over a period of 52 years immediately after the time of the calendar's perennial renewal after the new fire ceremony, which as we have seen would now take place in the year of two Reed. This 52-year ceremony was designed to push the calendar forward by as much as a full 68 days from the point of the winter solstice where it is consistently relocated back into its most extreme eastward boundary, usually to around the date of February 26th. This ceremony officially commenced on a midnight in the middle of November within the year of two Reed. Again, the basis of this ceremony comes from the Mayan calendar traditions where it was called Tumbin Ka'ak. For the Aztecs, it was later to be called Shiwa Mopolizli, meaning the binding of years which is a very distinct and precise allusion to the necessary increment of intercalary days that were to be added in order to realign the 52-year cycle with the movement of the tropical year. The ceremony took place at that point in mid-November when the Pleiades reached the zenith around the time of midnight. Although, in truth, the exact hour of night in which this happened is not as important as has been emphasized in our recent times, since precession was constantly shifting this factor anyway. It is this reason of astronomical precession which serves as one of the main causes for the Aztecs having moved the ceremony from one year over to the next. In any case, the result would include the following year of three flint to be initiated around 13 days from the previous New Year's occurrence on February 12th in the year of two read. The fact which concerns the 54-day dispersion of the immovable date of February 12th from the winter solstice cannot be seen as being presented or recorded in any ancient or modern documents and is being offered here for the first time by the author to help alleviate the current mass confusion that has been generated by the formal misunderstandings of the Mesoamerican calendar and its attendant principles. Although, it probably could be included that Fray Diego Duran did state that the year began on February 3rd of the Julian calendar but in truth we are not sure exactly what he may have been referring to since no reliable chronology was ever presented in his works. The dates that are to be demonstrated within the upcoming diagrams will show the mathematics of these New Year Day differences with respect to the 12-year cycle. The reason for the 54-day dispersion from the winter solstice instead of a 52-day separation, I believe, may have to do with the conceptualization of a 366-day year that was then divided up into seven segments of 52 days each and which therefore left two days over from a 364 day division. Those two days were then to be applied to the dispersion of the year from the winter solstice for a total of 54 days instead of 52. 
These complex rules and extrapolations show that there are, of course, great differences to be found between these two New Year calendars, which come from China and Mexico. But because of the fourfold nature of the Aztec year cycle, we are able to find a notable similarity with the Chinese year calendar, which has 12 archetypes. Reasonably, it can be assumed that the Chinese year count is therefore astrologically more refined to the Aztec year count, which only has four archetypes. This is because more astrological detail can be read into 12 archetypes rather than just four. This, however, is the reason for the experimental comparison which is taking place here that compensates by including the nature of the three astrological modalities from the Western Zodiac. This will further help corroborate all astrological aspects of the Mesoamerican calendar as a whole. While for the purpose of this project we are comparing the Chinese and Aztec New Year cycles for the intention of astrological interpretation, the truth remains of course that the Mesoamerican calendar is still unlike anything else in the world and astrologically superior to any calendar with regards to its unique 260 day cycle. The four archetypes of the Aztec year cycle in conjunction with the 13 numbers compose the greater cycle of 52 years strictly as a matter of being in a conjunction with the 260 day cycle of the Tonal Pueli. The history concerning the evolution of the four Aztec New Year's archetypes actually have their basis in the history of the Mayan calendar, which is a more convoluted assessment of facts that will be elaborated later on in the presentation. However, for the time being, I would say that it is most likely that it was probably the Mesoamerican tribe of the Zapotecs or the later Mixtecs who were the ones who had initially made the preliminary changes to their calendar and who had first created a unique and original year symbol by dropping the Mayan zero date and therefore then itemizing the following day as the first day of the year. And by circling that symbol as a representative of the whole year, they then referred to the year by that name symbol. Historically, only four archetypal symbols could initiate the first day of the year. Those four symbols would later come to be known within the Aztec culture as reed, flint or the turkey, the house, and the rabbit. However, it should be noted again that by the time of the Aztec tribes of the late 1400s that the symbol for the year was conceptualized as an ending point rather than a beginning point. Meaning for instance, if the year was symbolized by the reed symbol, then the last day of the year was the day of the reed. This principle was the same for the other three symbols as well. The outcome of this particular practice had its result in the first days of the Aztec years as being jaguar, rain, lizard, and water. In the case of the years, reed, flint, house, and rabbit, respectively. What I have sought to arrange in this presentation is a new understanding of how the three Western astrological modalities of the cardinal, fixed, and mutable actually have a prominent persuasion that weaves its threefold influence not only through the Western zodiac but through the Chinese zodiac and as well as the various astrological partitions of the Mesoamerican calendar as well. Therefore, as has been shown, we will be analyzing the four Aztec years as a 12-fold cycle in conjunction with the other 12-fold cycles of the Western and Chinese zodiacs. The three-fold influences of the modalities have been expressed in Mesoamerica by the symbolism found upon the Aztec sunstone in the form of various crowns that surmount the day signs. Just ahead is an explanation for my reasoning behind the arrangement of the modalities and their symbolism that is to be found upon the painting. But first I will demonstrate the actual source from which this theory for the three Mesoamerican modalities was discovered as they are seen upon the sunstone. Here within this picture it can clearly be seen that the sun god wears two of the same symbols that are used to crown twelve of the twenty day signs as seen upon the sunstone. Four of these day sign symbols are reserved for the days that mark the end of each twenty day month and which for that matter designate the years as the four year bearers of the reed, the flint, or the turkey, the house and the rabbit. Clearly, the symbols atop of these day signs are crowns and which are derived from the more ancient iconography of Tlaloc and Xihuatacutli as the lords of the year in early Mesoamerica. Here, the sun god Tonatiwa is depicted wearing the year crown in the form of the royal Xihuitzoli, which is the turquoise diadem that the Toltec noblemen all throughout ancient Mexico once wore. I have given this symbol the name Xihuitzoli Tlacochtli, meaning turquoise year crown arrow. Beneath the sun's face we see the symbol for jade in what is apparently Tonatiwa's neck garment just as it is to be perceived within the codices and other representations. The symbol should be understood as representing the delicate features of water interacting with light found within the processes between the rain and the sun. 
For that matter, it could be said that the sun god wears rain clouds beneath its neck as a precious garment of jade, while he darts forth like an arrow through the ecliptic within the seasons of the year. With respect to this process, I have given this symbol the name Chalchiwe Kwichkumito Miowatl, meaning jade neck garment arrow tassel. These symbols, which are often called Chalchiwetls, are in turn the crowns for eight out of the twenty day signs known as wind, lizard, deer, water, grass, jaguar, movement, and rain. These eight signs clearly have to do with the sun's fecundant and fertilizing qualities, and which for that matter could also signify youthful beginnings, purity, and innocence. Notice how this symbol is used to encase the circle of the twenty day signs upon the whole of the sunstone. Finally, there is the ever-popular symbol from out of Mesoamerica, best known as a principal feature of the Aztec sunstone representing the light rays of the sun as they hurl outwards from the center into the space of the four directions. A very general nautical term may be applied to these symbols, and which I have done here in this case, calling them simply Shiwamitl, meaning light ray arrow. A distinctive feature is that these forked arrow symbols serve to crown not only one sign, but rather two day signs apiece, as they mark out the four cardinal directions. These eight signs are alligator, serpent, death, or the turtle, dog, monkey, eagle, vulture, and finally, the flower. Because of the positioning of these three symbols upon the twenty day signs, it becomes obvious that they were indeed regarded as the three modes of the twenty day signs that comprise of the astrological Tonopoeli. For that matter, while we visit the engaging correlations found between the Chinese and Aztec year cycles, it hardly needs to be inferred that perhaps there was at some point a touchdown between the two cultures of the ancient Chinese and the Mexicans, just as many have speculated about when considering ancient Mexico's diverse cultural past. For that matter, due to a sketchy observation that I have found between certain Mayan terms and Babylonian concepts, like in the case of the watery constellation of Pegasus being called Muluku in Babylon, and the water sign of the twenty-day count of the Maya being referred to as Muluk, we therefore probably should not doubt the possibility that the concept of these three modes may indeed have arrived from elsewhere within the world, and finally into Mesoamerica. However, at this point, such emphasis lies outside of the scope of this work. Instead, we shall continue and try to rebuild the once functional astrological system that had once existed in Mesoamerica in all of its profound glory and splendor.